The majority of people, they want to believe what they want to believe in. Even when hearing the words of people, they believe what they want to believe. We, when we say that we are people of God, we believe what we want and we believe the words that we want, that's not it. It's believing the things of God, believing God's voice and hearing God's voice and believing His word. So that's why if we see in the world, it's that those who don't believe creation, but they believe evolution. This is because of Genesis chapter 3, that the corruption of humankind. They don't want to believe that there's God already in their heart. The devil has become father, the master, and continuously wanting to believe that there is no God. So talking about evolution, saying that, oh, that is what is believable. Why? Because within me, the devil will continuously make it where there is no God. And speaking about there not being God. So you can only but believe in evolution. And the more you hear it, that you believe it. That's why so many people, they believe what they want. Many people are like that. Also, what I want to believe, what I want to do, you want to hear the words of those who say and speak such things. So it's very important of what you hear, but what's more important is what is it that is within me? What is it that I want to believe in? So the Word of God, if it enters within us and it's not our standard, then it's going to be difficult in our life. Genesis 1, 1, surely the Scripture tells us that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Surely it said so. But people don't believe it. Why? Because they don't want to believe it. Their hearts, people who have the devil as the Lord and Master of their life, they cannot believe that the Lord, the God, who created the heavens and the earth, and that's because Satan is continuously working. Those born in original sin, they will hear about evolution and only but believe in evolution. Genesis 1, 1, God creates the heaven and the earth. What does that mean? It speaks that He is Almighty and that He is the Lord and Master of everything. What we see with our eyes, the Lord and Master of everything is who? God. But the devil wants to deny that. What we see with our eyes, everything that we see, all nature, creation, the universe that God has given and done, but not being believable, those that unbelief, the Satan, is working within us. Especially upon the hearts and minds of unbelievers, this is working. The Holy Spirit, the, 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 the God that we believe in, in the Bible, it says that He created us in His image. We have to understand that we have spirit, we have soul. But making us that we don't believe it, that we say, oh, even dogs have soul and spirit. And even Disney, they even make this movie. What does it say? All dogs go to heaven. And even created a movie like that. This was when I was in like high school. This has been probably 40 years. All dogs go to heaven. I look at this, I'm like, what is that? The people of the world see that, especially those who really like dogs, right? They're like, yeah, my dog, my pet that I love, let's meet each other in heaven. If you're in that kind of level, you're both going to hell. If you think that, have that thought that you're going to meet your dog in heaven, then that is like... You are not understanding. I love the dogs. I love this and that. But dogs are not spiritual beings. But this word of God is what you're unable to believe. If you hear the word of God, you believe the word of God, you absolutely need God's grace. So you're sitting here, you're worshiping, you're all hearing the word of God, but if the grace of God does not come upon you, then you listen to according to your thoughts. You just basically... Interpret according to your thoughts. That, that's why at this time of worship, what is most important is God's grace. And continuously, we have spiritual battle, breaking by the force of darkness and hear the word of God that we must worship. We must hear the word and do it in what? In prayer. When the grace of God comes upon us, what happens? The word of God becomes believable. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That word becomes believable. Is it that I believe? Is that God must give me grace to believe. Oh, let's save our posterity. But God must give us the grace to be able to believe this. Towards there's a nation, 5,000 tribes. Let's save, but it's only 
through God's grace that we can believe. If it's not the power of the triune God, these words, it's only when God gives us grace that we can believe. The throne's blessing to save the three ages, past, present, future, it must only be God's power that then we can believe. God must give us the grace to believe. People, as children of God, you talk about this for a hundred years, it doesn't matter. To your children, if God does not give grace, then the words will not be relayed to them. That's why what? We must make our children to those who know God's grace. Those who know worship, make your children. Those children who know what prayer is. That's what this is. Why? Because they must hear the word of God to live. They must be clothed with God's grace to live. For those who cannot hear these words, do your best. Do all you can. If you do best, your best, you will succeed. That's how the world will continuously speak to us. You need to know that our posterity, our children, must not be deceived by that. <laughs> Satan, from the very beginning, he broke being one with God. If that's the case, today we're going to speak about the authority of Jesus Christ. And first we speak about what the words Satan speaks, what the words the people of the world speak, and what the word that Jesus spoke. That's what we're going to share. What does Satan say? He speaks the words of continuously breaking being one with God. Creating the image of God, we're supposed to be with God. We're supposed to have fellowship with God, but the devil breaks that. Through the incident of Genesis chapter 3, what? Breaking being one with God. In all areas, through all people, breaking, becoming one. This is the work of Satan to fulfill God's works, to fulfill God's kingdom. Continuously hindering this is the work of Satan. Of course, those who have unbelief, they gather. And breaking these groups of unbelief is God's works. Because those who are gathering in unbelief, those need to be broken. And it will surely well. But the devil, he breaks being one with God. So what does Jesus say? He says, the devil from the very beginning is a liar. And he is the father of lies. So all the, the words that the devil speaks is just lies. What kind of lies? The lies that you cannot be one with God. But what are these lies? It's facts. The devil, Satan, the words that he speaks, it's actually fact. It's not incorrect. It speaks the facts, but spiritually it's completely incorrect. It just says, hey, if you eat from the fruit of the tree, you will not die. Adam and Eve, they ate from the fruit of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil, but they did not die. They did not physically, but spiritually, they died. It seems like fact, but completely spiritually, it is all incorrect. That's what the devil does, this father of lies. You must know this. That's why the incident of Genesis chapter 3 arose. Separation from God and sin and curses for the rest of your life, being a slave to the devil and doing the errands of Satan. That's humankind. That continues on. That goes to society. And what happens? All the society becomes Nephilim. The one who's fallen from heaven, from, from above. This is Satan. This is speaking about Satan, being in the ruler and the control of Satan. There's culture, there's sports, there's music, there's arts. So many different things. But what is it? It's Satan overcoming it. That's when corruption takes place. That's why studies, music, sports, Arts, all these things that we do, but it must be in the covenant. If you don't understand the covenant, what happens? As you have music, you corrupt. As you have do music, you come to spiritual problems in sports, in music, and arts, and all of these you succeed, but you have spiritual problems. I think it was the uh, first year of college. I was in Knox College. It was a Christian school, but things didn't work, so it kind of went over to becoming, becoming a secular school. And over there, there was this music teacher and was doing this performance and this, this masterpiece, right? It was all put across in this hallway, an exhibit. And there's this one art, I was like shivers down my spine. I didn't know what it was, what it was. It was just like dark and black and explaining what this person says was. When I was drawing this, I kept speaking and talking about Satan. I said, Satan, Satan, and continues to do this. And now I understand what that picture is. I don't want to see this at night or anything. Even during the day, it's like, 
goosebumps, shivers down my spine. This is how, right now, Satan attacks culture and, and, and conquers. Something just like crying out Satan and drawing and painting and doing sports and music. And that what happens? You continuously succeed. But what's going on? How are children going to be? What are we doing? Are we living for success? Isn't that just sad? Why do we talk about the spiritual summit? Because we really need to know who we are. We need to know who God is. And to be able to do the things pertaining to God's kingdom and the works, no, the mystery. If we become the spiritual summit, talents will follow, is what we say. We need to be one who is a person after God's own heart. He will take care of our future. But why is it that we keep changing the order? Why do we keep listening to the words of the devil? Oh yeah, I need to succeed. Following those words, why do we first build this Tower of Babel? Those who have the gospel, those who have the covenant, what? We need to be able to fulfill the kingdom of God. But people, they listen to the words of Satan and change their priority. The moment you change your priority, this is what's broken down. Me being one with God. We must always be only. We must always be Christ. Before studies, Christ. Before family, Christ. Before business, Christ must take place. Somebody says this to me. Somebody asks this kind of question. Pastor, is dad first or church? This is saying upon the children. And said, is this church first or, pa or, or father? Because this dad wanted to hear, dad must be first before church, not knowing who I am. As a pastor, I'm like, rightfully, church is first. And he was taken aback. Church is first. You have to understand what this means. Our priority changes. Oh, fathers first, children first, husbands first, wife is first. That's why it's not working. That's why without me knowing and conflicts and problems and crises is what you're showing. Rightfully, you think, oh, dad must be first. Because my children are first or my husband, my wife is first. You may think that way, live that way, but what happens? Problems come. You don't know why problems have come. People do not know. Anyone who sees it physically, what I'm doing is right. Even next to us saying, oh yeah, what you're doing is right. That's rightful. Of course, family's first. Of course, husband, wife, children, parents are first. That's what they say. If you hear those words, these, that voice, it's a big problem. Why must we be clothed with God's grace? Because even though we hear this, we must realize, ah, this is not it. Adam and Eve, we know, right? Eve, if you think that because of unbelief she fell, that's a big problem. The devil came and kept spewing the words of unbelief. And it's not because of the unbelief, it's because in Eve's heart, there was not the sure covenant. So many people are living in misconception. Oh, because of their unbelief, it's not working. Oh, they have such great faith that's working. Oh, they're doing it so diligently, or they're not, that they failed. That's misconception. Everything is covenant. What is fulfilled is because of the covenant. What has not been fulfilled is because it's not the covenant. You have to look in this center. The devil could keep saying, do this, do that. You do it this way, you'll fail. You do that, you'll fail. People follow that. Right now, you and I, what is the covenant that we must hold to? It must be only, only Jesus Christ. It must be. The devil wanted to break this, continuously spews lies. Acts 13, 16, 19, what happened? Through lifestyle, through culture, continuously attacking. Right? Through fortune telling, through people, what I believe in. All these people, their standards that they have, we keep talking about that. Look at this. You have to do this. That's what you need to do. Don't be deceived. This goes into the state of the unbelievers that what? God is master, but we are the misconception that the devil is a master. Whose voice are you listening to? If you don't hear the words of God, then you need to examine who is my master. Although you're saved, if you don't hear the word of God, Jesus Christ is not the Lord and master of your life right now. Even these pets and animals know the voice of their master, the Lord. We who are spiritual beings, if we don't hear the word of God, then that's a big problem. That's why right now in this age, because of spiritual problems, because people do not know who the Lord and Master is, people continuously fail. People don't understand problems and why problems are coming to them.
moving forward, mental illness will happen, problems of, uh, of drugs, and so many people, they're just committing suicide. How are we going to block this? Who can block this? What kind of skills and what can do people do to block this? There's no way. This, we need to understand the background of Satan exists. If we don't have the answer of Christ, we cannot block this. Right now, even right now, Satan says to you, continuously talks to you, with scars, continuously tells you, you, you know what this, that person said to you? You know what the church did to you? Do you know what people are saying behind your back? Continuously speaking such words. You and I, what kind of answer must we come to? We don't know the word of God. We cannot win. If it's not God's grace, we cannot overcome the words of unbelief. If God is not giving us strength, then we need to kneel before the devil. Right now, Satan, he will kneel before us, was what was promised. But instead, we're kneeling before Satan. Or say that excuses. We're busy. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I'm sick. I'm tired. Oh, I have to take care of my family. Because of this, because of that. So many different excuses and reasons. Before God, no excuse, no reason. Get rid of all of that. What does it say? People say that, get rid of your excuses and reasons. People don't understand. They say, how? But, oh, oh, let's not make excuses. Yeah, let's not make excuses. Let's not have any other reasons. No, it's not that. It's saying to hold to the covenant. You must hold to the covenant that those reasons and excuses can disappear. How can you just get rid of your excuses and reasons? You don't have the covenant. God is the absolute sovereign God. If you don't understand and believe that He is in control, why is it that David, he knew that he will be king, but 10 years wandering in hardships. Do you know why he bared with that? Because David, after being anointed with oil, he held to that covenant, that God is going to raise me as king, so I will be king. But death comes upon him. I cannot die. David knew that. Why? Because he was anointed with oil. He held to the covenant. So then, before my eyes, it seems like this hardship that I'm going to die. It's not a reason. It's not an excuse. By chance, right now, you have reasons, excuses. Should I do this or not? You have all these things. Get rid of it. What does it mean? Hold to the covenant. Adam and Eve, why did they eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Because they lost hold of the covenant. Unbelief will continuously follow you. Husband, wife, children, parents, studies, work interpersonal relationships, and then the constantly unbelief will come to you. How will you overcome it? Oh, is it get rid of that person who's giving me that unbelief? No, if I'm holding to the covenant, unbelief has nothing to do with you. If you lose hold of the covenant, unbelief is so factual to you. The words of Satan, what's the problem? If I'm sure, if I'm surely holding to the covenant, it doesn't matter what people say. Jesus is the Christ, is the Lord and Master of my life. What is the problem? God says He will resolve it. Why am I being worried? What for me not to worry, but why am I worrying? Oh, because of unbelief. Oh, because worries, anxiety. No, it's because you don't have the covenant. So that's why the Bible, the whole Bible speaks of what? That Jesus is the Christ. It's that covenant. So today, you and I, what is it that we must hold to that covenant? That Jesus is the Christ. Paul, what did he do? Boldly, Paul proclaimed that we are proclaiming, testifying that Jesus Christ is Lord, the one who solves all problems. He's my Lord. He is your Lord. That's what we must speak of. Don't be deceived by the words of Satan. You're deceived by the words of Satan. What happened? We're also deceived by the words of the world. Do you know what religion is? We cannot find and see God. God has promised and said that He will come find us. That is the gospel. What is religion? You must find. You can find God. You cannot. God, He has come found us. That Jesus Christ that He has found us through, we need to understand. What is religion though? I do it by my strength. I have to do it by my strength. We need to discover and cover that I cannot do it by my strength. Knowing that, God, I cannot do it, that, God, you have done it. People around you will say, do your best, do all you can, give your strength. That becomes a standard. 
doing your best, what that means, as Pastor Yu even said this, don't be lazy, what, what that means. Don't be lazy is what that means. That is not the standard. Doing your best is not the way. The unique way that God has given to us is only Jesus Christ. So looking upon the Lord, don't be lazy in that is what this means. Do your best does not mean the problems are resolved. But the world says, oh, religion, you must find. Until you die, you will not find God. So when I see it, what religion is done is they say about, it's, it's explained well like chasing after rainbows. You chase after rainbow, you cannot find where the rainbow starts and grab hold of that rainbow. You cannot do it by your strength and your effort. There's spiritual problems that come from us, separation from God. I can never find, I can never resolve. There's no power for me to find and seek God. I've said this so many times, Thomas Aquinas, he was a theologian who said this, Genesis chapter 3, what that incident is, what's original sin? That we have lost complete our righteousness to choose good. We cannot. I think that's so right. Because of the incident of Genesis chapter 3, we do not have the power. We lost the power to choose God. So God must come to us. What I cannot resolve, God must come to us and resolve it for us. But what does the world say? You do it. You can do it. So Genesis chapter 3, the devil through the serpent. How does he deceive Eve? Say, you can be like God. If you eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you eyes will be open to be like God. But strangely, those words were so sweet. Hearing those words, looking at the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it was so pleasing to the eyes. It looked good to eat and ate right away. Ate and what happened? Eve evangelized to Adam, brought this fruit and said, eat. And this Adam didn't even ask. Giving it, just ate right away. Didn't even ask her. The words of the people of the world. What is legalism? Say that you need to be good, proper. I am proper. Don't do wrong, live correctly. What does the Bible say? <laughs> it's impossible for you to do that. So you need to meet God through Christ. So then what? If you're saved, can you just live as you want? No. Who says to live as you want? Where does it say in the Bible? Live according to God's will is what it says. Simply, that I live properly is meaning that you cannot receive salvation. Religion, legalism, unhealthy mysticism. What is that? Experience power. You need to have strength to experience this amazing power. What we must understand is that we don't experience power. Honestly, what we experience Christ. So the great power is what? It's fulfillment of God's word. We receive God's word. That the word being fulfilled is what we confirm. That's the greatest strength. Why is it that we cannot experience something else? Because what does the Bible say? Everything else will disappear, will fade away. But it's only the word of God that will last forever. The eternal word of God is what we need to experience. That is the most greatest strength. That is worship. So that's why, what is it, the devil? The first way to break you down is so that you don't hear the word of God. You need to come to your senses. If the word of God is not being heard in your ears, then right now, the spiritual strength that's within you, that is being sucked away. When you hear the word of God, you're doubting, you're wondering, and all this unbelief is coming to you. The devil is what? Taking away all your spiritual strength. You need to come to your senses. That's why we say in Korean, like your eyes are open, but somebody takes your nose right away from you. How can somebody take your nose right before when you're looking straight? Are you going to leave that alone? But they take the nose from you and you don't even know. Why? Because the world, the devil, gives you the physical things. Before my eyes, you look at those physical things. And so what happens? It seems like I have this, I possess it. But finding out, you have nothing. Takes it all away. That's why people lose hold of worship. That's why people lose hold of the word, of prayer, of praise, lose hold of offering, lose hold of fellowship, lose holding of their life, of faith, not even knowing that they're losing hold of it. Because they think, oh, I'm doing it. The misconception. Oh, I came to church on Sunday. Oh, I read the Bible. Oh, I I'm praying. I'm praying these days. Oh, I'm even giving advice and materials to my friends. Oh, we gather. We even have prayer meetings. 
this kind of misconception people are living in. What do we need to understand? The devil takes everything from you through religion, through legalism, through unhealthy mysticism, and also what? Through humanism. No matter how much I think uh, this method is right. Using your own thoughts, you use humanism. So Moses, what did he say? In front of the Red Sea, upon the Israelites who were in unbelief, just stay still. See the salvation of the Lord. Can you be still and see it? You need to be able to. If your eyes do not open, you can't see anything. But what does the devil say? What does the world say? Hey, do it according to your thoughts. Do what your plans are. Not hearing the word of God, those are the special characteristics. This is all it. People who do not hear the word of God, religion. Right? What I try to do. Those who cannot hear the word of God, the special characteristics, you have to be right. What is correct? Do that. Choose the things. We are not correct and proper. It's we choose Christ. We choose the word. That's why every week we hold to that word and we must pray. People say this. Oh, that person is so sad. The standard must not be that. Oh, that person, I need to help him, her. The thoughts of, oh, I need to help that person must not be the standard. Right now, at this time, what is God's absolute is what the standard is. You help everyone and then you end up failing. You do all you can to what? All these thoughts of, oh, how sad and this and that. And you lose hold of worship. You so busily help all other people and you're falling asleep in worship. You must not do that. Everything I have, place it down and what? Enter inside the Word. Enter inside of worship. No matter what people say, get rid of that unbelief. Have the true strength. That's why today we're talking about the authority of Jesus Christ. If you don't know this, you will all be deceived. The world will keep saying, use humanism. Do good. You have to help this person. Do your best. What you're thinking of, what you're doing, your efforts, and you need to use your strength to do this and that, and continuously deceives us. <coughs> Apostle Paul, he, in Colossians, accurately said the answer to this. Colossians 2, 8-9, through 9, it says this, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. So Satan the world will continue to use philosophy and empty deceit and takes us captive. So it's saying, be careful for this. According to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world. Ultimately, it's people, the things of people. You know, the devil is actually teaching. And not according to Christ. The words of Satan, the words of people. How do you know? What do you need to do? If you don't know the word of God, you cannot discern. You need to know the Word of God that then, ah, I can follow Christ, is what you must know. That's why we do schedule prayer. That's why we hear the Word in a forum. That's the reason for these things. That the Word that God gives to me accurately understanding. If you don't have this, watch. Colossians 2, 8, it will be just as that, deceiving by these empty deceits. The deceivers come and deceives you, and you will continuously be deceived. Always. You'll be conned. You know the IQ of like fish? I don't know exactly what that is, but the fish, they're caught by a hook just a moment ago, and then they let go. Remember, that's not even like a minute. They're caught, and then they let go, and a minute later, going again and biting and being caught again. What does the Bible say? It's like dogs who throw up, they eat that food again. Then They don't need any more food. They just throw up and eat that and throw up and eat that again. Through your mistakes, you repeat them over and over again. The words of people, the words of Satan, the words of the people of the world, if you hear these words, this is what will happen to you. According to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, you need to have the word of God that you can stop these things, right? People don't know what Satan even wants. People don't know how Satan is even deceiving. People don't know how the world is deceiving. People do not know. And think about this. Your children, you're leaving them, letting them go to the world. Sometimes those parents, I think, wow, how frustrating. Oh, their children go to a good place, a great school, and they're just so happy about that. They do something well. You're so pleased by that. What must we be pleased by? Succeeding in worship, succeeding in prayer, 
succeeding in the fulfillment of God's word, that God is almighty, knowing the power of the triune God. That's where you need to be pleased with. It's okay if they don't study well. Their sports aren't that good. Their music is not that good. Even if they don't draw and do art well. They don't have this power to just live and go on and eat whatever that much. But they must know the power of the triune God. They must know the throne's power and blessing. The past, present, future to save. You must know this power. But if you don't know this, what happens? You'll keep hearing the words of Satan. You're keeping hearing the words that the world says. You know that this is not right, but you keep seeing it. You want to follow it. And one day you come to your senses, you're just in failure. You go crazy to build the Tower of Babel, but one day it is completely crumbled down. Why? Because God broke it down. If you do idolatry, it says the third and fourth generation said what? You'll be cursed. God is not pleased by that. We must do what God wants. Our posterity must do what God wants. That's why the words, Satan, words of the people of the world, the authority to break this is the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. If this is uh, talking about breaking the strongholds. Let's look in 1 Corinthians 10. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy stronghold. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Amen. This is amazing. This is amazing. That what kind of authority Jesus Christ has before God that it's the weapons of a warfare to what has the divine power to destroy strongholds that we can destroy this power of Satan this divine power to destroy strongholds and it says what we destroy arguments the devil will continuously say this and that these lofty opinions what I think Oh, I see from my examination, from my calculation, this and that, completely getting rid of it, that is raised against the knowledge of God. Oh, because saying, it's okay, you don't need God. It's fine. You want to succeed, do this and that. Don't follow that. You raise your children, you want to raise them well, but your whole life, you do the errands of Satan. You end up showing that to your children, relaying that to your children. If you don't know the word of God, you can't do anything. But starting today, you must hear God's word. By God's grace, you must hear his word, hold to it and pray. God will upon you, our life, upon our posterity, raise the partisans of God. You need to hold to this. The Bible is evidence of this. When I meet people, it doesn't work for. When I see people, right, this is my bad habits. But I see them like, oh, it's going to work for this person. I don't think it's going to work for this. I keep thinking such thoughts. So I meet people, I keep fighting that kind of fight. Right? Because I hear the words that this person says, it's not going to work for this person. Because they're having incorrect thoughts. And I know that my thoughts are incorrect. Why? Because this person has incorrect thoughts, but... Starting today, if this person calls on the name of Jesus as a spiritual battle, the thoughts can change. It says it will destroy all arguments, every lofty opinion. So when I meet people, I keep praying for and keep worried about it. It says, may not be captured by my thoughts. What I see with my eyes, what I hear with my ears may not, not be the standard. That upon this person, what I don't know, that eternal, this absolute, may that be the standard. Otherwise, you'd be deceived. Everyone would be deceived. That's why we judge and criticize people, point fingers, say this and that. You must know first. Like, oh, if this is the way that person goes, it's not going to be good. You need to know that. And we need to be able to pray. Why? Because God just needs to do it. That person just hasn't experienced the power. So the name of Jesus, that authority of the name, to experience that. 
is a call that name raising God's partisan and to be able to destroy this divine power to destroy stronghold to be able to overcome unbelief we just need to pray that prayer and what ultimately we obey Christ so Jesus what does he say that's what he spoke of right but Satan, the words of the people of the world, to break this stronghold, he spoke the word. So today, our main scripture, let's look back to John 7, verse 45 through 52. If you see, it says, The officers then came to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, why did you not bring him? This is verse 45. The officers and the chief priests, the Pharisees, they, oh, I'm sorry, the chief priests and Pharisees said to the officers to go bring Jesus. But, if, but what happens is many people thought Jesus as a prophet. And also some believed as Christ. So if you capture Jesus, they will not leave him alone. So looking well, that just quietly go capture Jesus. Look at the opportunity and go capture Jesus. But they couldn't. They did not. So that's why they were asking, who said to them, why did you not bring him? Right? The, the, everything is finished now for the time. <coughs> then verse 46, the officers answered, no one ever spoke like this man. Always the whole life, the words of Satan, the words of the people of the world is what you hear. But Jesus comes and speaks of this authority, opposite of the words of Satan, opposite of the words of the people of the world. Also, it's all through this. These Pharisees, these rabbis, when they teach the word of God, they would always use something as a reference. Oh, somebody so-and-so said, or from here, this and that. So it's not their own thoughts, but what others have used, they reference that. But Jesus, what does he say? Directly says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, there's nothing else that he brings in reference to. He's just, it's of his own. But everybody from then, they didn't speak of their own. They all would have heard and referenced and said, if you're not a fool, you would understand. That's why the officers said, no one ever spoke like this man. Right? The Bible is all about this. Mark 1 27 is about this a new teaching with authority hearing Jesus word you have assurance and those who don't have assurance and says something you can tell right everyone who hears knows hearing the words of Jesus it's a new teaching with authority Mark 4 35 to 41 it says that they're on the boat and wind waves it was going crazy the storm and Jesus was sleeping. So the disciples went and woke him up and said, Jesus, do something. We're going to die. And Jesus went up from the boat and rebuked the sea. said, be quiet. And what happened? Those winds and waves suddenly became calm. And people were all shocked. Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey? <sighs> even though experiencing, they don't know. If you're up to this much, you must recognize. But like, wait, wow, amazing, right? Knowing the actuality that Jesus is the Christ, that's what religion is. You go to church, you receive answers, and you receive answers to prayers, all these things. But ultimately, in the end, it needs to be only Jesus. That, oh, Jesus Christ is Lord and Master. That Jesus is the Christ, He's my Lord and my Master. That needs to be the end. But it's just answers. So one day when the answers don't come, people are conflicted. One day you're clashing with your own thoughts, you can't overcome them. Why? Because you're just holding to answers. Through those answers, what must we hold to? It must be only Jesus. That's why no matter what situation that we can look upon the Lord. Just look upon the Lord. Hebrews surely said at 12 that he is the one of our faith and the one upon Jesus Christ that we need to look upon. Only Jesus. It's only deeply thinking about this Jesus. We think about all different things. We don't deeply look upon Jesus. We look at something else. We hear the words of Satan. The words of Satan is just so 
ringing in our ears. We hear the words of the people of the world, and the words of the people of the world do not depart from our ears. Why? Because you don't have the covenant. We hear words that don't make any sense, and we end up following that. You and I, what must we do? Jesus directly even says, John 5, 25, what does Jesus say? It says from verse 24, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here. Those who hear, right, will live. You need to hear the word of God and you will live. When you hear the word of God, you will live. But what's the problem? You don't hear. Why don't you hear? Because the words of Satan have already entered in. It's become your Lord and Master. The words of the world has already been imprinted. And that becomes your Master, your Lord. So the word of God, no matter how much you hear it, you have no emotions. You have no feeling. You come Sunday, you need to know that you need to concentrate, but you can concentrate. The shocking thing is, what does Jesus say? You just need to hear, and you will live. So what will the devil do then? Just make you not hear, right? Just make you not hear the word of God. Even if you hear, you hear it as religion. You hear it as legalism. You hear it as unhealthy mysticism. You hear it in so much ways to use humanism, you just listen to God's word. The Word of God, you need to hear it as the Word of God. Otherwise, the devil is successful. He succeeds if he makes you, prevent you from doing it. That's what happened. So people are like, oh, it's the devil's part, that bastard. It's all because of the devil. The one to overcome that devil, that authority has been given to us. That name of Jesus, hold to that authority. And we need to pray. But we don't know that authority, we don't pray. That's why it's not working. God has given us everything. You and I, all of us, we keep asking, God, give me this and that. Don't keep doing that. All that we have already have, call in the name of Jesus. Take all that's been taken from us. So starting today, what? Call on this name of Jesus. Surely, the Lord says, those who hear will live. Verse 25, it says, The dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. Isn't that shivers down your spine? When the dead, those who were dead spiritually, will hear the voice of the Son of God and says what? Those here will live. It's this is the time. It's now here. When is the time that we live and revive? It's now. It's now here. Those who hear will live. Am I living or not? It's simple. It's if you heard the word of God or if you not. Also, in a more deeper state, have you received God's grace or not? Some people, they receive the word of God in their brain. So there's the thoughts that keep talking. That. That's dangerous. You need to be clothed with the grace of God that you receive the word of God in your heart. Then without you knowing, you're putting it into action. Why? Because you received it with your heart. You don't receive it with your heart. You receive it with your mind. They just amazingly realize their form is amazing. They say this and that. There's just one thing unable to do is putting it to action. They know, but they're unable to do. This repeats later. You don't even realize. You live your Christian walk of faith like this without you even knowing the strongholds of Satan is just being built within you. The bars of Satan without you even knowing are built within you. God has sent Christ to completely break those partisans. But the covenant of Christ, you hold to it with your hand, you keep making this partisans of Satan is what may end up happening. We need to change this all today. Don't make excuses about anybody. Unbelief, worries, the world, all of that does not matter. God says he will do. Hold to that covenant. John 6, 63, also it says, it says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. Other than Jesus Christ, nothing saves. Nothing gives life. There's nothing that gives life but the Word of God. 
But you know it is flesh, a physical, that it's no help. You don't live. You can hear the word and you think, I don't need to hear the word. That's why we don't live. Without the word of God that I cannot live, that realization must come to us that we can hold to that word and live. That's why it is the spirit who gives life. It's the spirit. What do we do holding to the flesh, the physical? It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. What does Jesus say? He says, eat my flesh and drink from my blood that you can live. How can we eat his flesh? How, how can, what, we're going to drink Jesus' blood. Where is that? Somebody said that. You're drinking grape juice or wine. Or is that Jesus' blood? You have to understand the meaning. That Jesus Christ, his flesh was torn and he shed his blood on the cross. He finished everything. That's what we need to be able to understand. Hold to the covenant of Calvary. It's only that that can save you. People hold to foolish things. The words of Satan, the words of the people of the world, do this or that. Last week, didn't I say this? Twelve years, this woman with the bleeding disorder, trying to resolve her illness, seeking all the physicians and doctors, used all their money, but was unable to resolve it. This is right. You can't fix that. Because here in the name of Jesus, God's grace moved her heart. And she believed. How much did she believe? I will go to Jesus and touch the edge of his cloak and I'll be well. This is different. That kind of faith is different. God's grace comes upon it. You will believe the word of God. But why don't you believe the word of God? Why upon worship are you so tired and sleepy? Because you lost all the covenant. Is that anyone's excuse? Why hear the word of God and that in my heart? It is not moving. Why hear the word of God and this unbelief not broke that breakdown? Because you're holding to something else. You're holding something that is not the covenant of God. That's why. Hold it to something else, then what happens? You don't hear God's word. The words of Satan, the words of the people of the world is what you hear. And that is bringing to death, to destruction. That's why this year, Jeremiah 29, 10 to 14, haven't we received this word? That God, He Himself says that my plans for you, I know my plans. It's not disaster. What is it? It's peace, welfare, future and a hope. So hear that word of God. People think disaster has come. Hearing the word of God that, ah, this is not disaster, it's peace, welfare. You hear the word of God, you hold to the covenant. Wow, that becomes my future, that becomes my hope. It gives me hope. How do you live without the word? Without God's word, how do you marry, have children, raise your children, work and make money, have intimate relations? How can you continue that on? This unending constant unbelief, worries, anxiety, jealousy, rage, envy. How are you going to live this way? Without the word of God, how can you live continue on? That's why your whole life, you're just living a slave to the devil. The word of God. We as children of God have been called, so therefore that's why in the name of Jesus Christ, that covenant, hold to it and today. Do what? Call the name of Jesus. It's already finished, that fact. That Jesus, he has come, and he keeps saying, eh, eh, what? They, they keep, you know, seeing himself, right? If I go around and say, oh yeah, I'm so good looking. I, I'm such a handsome person. You're laughing even right now. Jesus, he himself is like, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Wow. Isn't that kind of embarrassing that he has himself has to say that I'm the way, the truth, and I'm the life? The way to come to the Father is only but through me. So those Pharisees who don't believe, they're kind of mocking him. Like, you're crazy. He's crazy. He says he's the way. He says he's the truth and he's the life. Moving forward, this is what we need to say with our lips, our words. Experience this word, the fulfillment as a stand, uh, as, as a witness to this to the end of the earth. Have this. And then God will call the two and the seven nations. Because why? People need to hear this. There are people who speak this. You and I, through our life, must find this answer. That's why Jesus, he says, he says, this, the words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. It's a covenant of Calvary. He has died on the cross for us. You believe this, it will all take place. John 14, 6, he says, 
I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You need to believe these words. Do you believe it? Then you are saved. These believable words daily, may you confirm it. My choices, decisions, always choosing Jesus, always following the word, right? When I see it, oh, this is the way to live, but if it's not the word, you may be the way towards death. It's like the blind guiding the blind. It's not possible. It's the words of Satan, the words of the people of the world. Listening to those words, it's like leaving ourselves as people who are blind. God says that He will guide us. These words of Jesus, there is power. Those who hear will realize. Why? Some realize and some do not. Because those who receive God's grace, those who are not clothed with God's grace, you and I today, we need to be able to receive God's grace in abundance all day long, all week. For the rest of our life, you and I, we need to be in God's grace. That is then. What kind of authority has and is with us, we can realize. Otherwise, we cannot realize. It's not realizing because we're smart. It's not realizing because we're ignorant. If we receive God's grace, we can. When God's grace is upon us, we can go together. When God's grace is upon us, we can put down our things a little bit. When God's grace comes upon us, we can send others ahead a little. It's okay if I'm a little behind or if I'm even last. But if God's grace is not upon us, everybody, they want to be number one. That I want to be the best. With these kinds of thoughts, you raise your children that way. Think about that. Isn't that kind of severe? Right now, your children. You're just pushing them towards death. First place, last place, it's not important. It's only Jesus that is important. That always, quietly, you can hold to the Word and pray. Your problems? What's the problem? Your conflicts come? So what if those conflicts? Is it such a bad thing to have conflicts? Oh, crisis has come to me. So, crisis has come. What does the Bible say? That? Isaiah? 53, that God has completely finished this through Christ. But what is resolved, I keep seeking after it, to hold to it. Conflicts come, it's finished. So then what? Hold to the covenant of Christ. Have that renewal. That covenant of Christ becoming my answer. That covenant of Christ becoming my opportunity. But what's the problem? You don't have that covenant. So starting today, you and I, Let's use, utilize this authority of Jesus Christ. When we hear the word of God, that word of power, saving me, experience that. Isn't that why? It's the seven parts. Part of the triune God. The triune God's power to save me. The power of the throne that saves me. Past, present, future, the power of God. From above, from the spiritual, intellectual, physical, financial, mad power. The one to overcome the rule of the kingdom of the air, the power of God. From the very beginning to the end, knowing the end, seeing in advance that power of the CBDIP. And what? To save all the church, the three courtyards. You see this? The business field, the three courtyards. There's church, three courtyards. Why? Because there's 237. All nations need to receive healing. You need to stand at spiritual summit. These partisans will be raised. This is the promise that God has given. The Lord just says, do it. That's not all it was. This amazing authority to overcome Satan and the world with that great authority, Jesus said. 237, healing, summit. Restore the three courtyards. Save all nations and heal and make the remnants the spiritual summit. God has said. Now what does the Lord say? Says to the, I will be with you to the ends of the earth. We must hold to that. That God is with us. He is with us. The Lord is with us with that covenant that the Lord says that He will fulfill it. What must we do? We need to believe that. Believe it. Hold to it. And pray. So we must start this new prayer. The Bible says such a thing. The kingdom of God is not upon words. It is in power. The words of Satan, the words of the people of the world, it's not there. It's God's power. 
Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, that power. Therefore, that's why you and I we must raise the partisan. What God desires and He wants, raise those partisan. God's kingdom. You find you and I, our family, our remnants, the studies of our remnants, the business field, our church, all fields. So the day the Lord comes again, it will continuously be fulfilled. In these answers, blessings, may you stand as witnesses of this. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Father God, we give you thanks. This amazing authority that you are with us through to save ourselves, to heal ourselves. May we hold to the words of the covenant of Jesus Christ and may we receive healing through that word. May we save all things through your word. May we stand as witnesses to the seven, five thousand tribes, save in all fields, especially that our children can stand as witnesses. May you bless us, Lord. Thank you. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.